Hello, King's Only. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pounds in through that door. The fire has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Uh, Daddy's here. Please don't cry. <laughs> the moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window. And ultimately, what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. Saturday night in King's A&E, one of the toughest and busiest shifts of the week. The waiting room is filling up with the first wave of weekend casualties. She was quite agitated with it though, wasn't she? Uh -huh. I cried and quite stressed. He so, oh, looked like he was going to be fitting. I was worried about him fitting. Yeah. Ema will be the trauma lead on call for the next 25 hours. A busy day at work is like a roller coaster, so it'll start ticking along quite nicely, but you know what could very easily be round the bend. And then you have these tremendous highs and periods of rushing, and then times of waiting, waiting for the next thing to come in. All I need is a stitch. I mean, just give me a fucking stitch and let me go home. Yeah, that's it. But you're there with your friends, and uh, you try to keep your hands inside the coach at all times. It's a huge stress, it's a huge responsibility. But if you work hard and keep up with it, it's incredibly enjoyable. Oh, it said BT, sorry. Eight year old, four. Four from what? Pediatric trauma call in six minutes. Pediatric trauma call in six minutes. BMX injury. GCS 13 facial injuries. When you see the things that children can die from in accidents, I was really obsessive when my kids were little about what they could fall off and cut themselves on, and you know, they're never allowed out on their scooters or their bikes without their cycle helmets. All of those things, because those injuries are very real. They happen all the time. An eight-year-old boy has fallen eight feet from a ramp at a BMX park onto his head. His dad has come with him in the ambulance. Dad's here. Oh, right. DCS 7, right, let's hack. get him across, get him assessed. Of, um, yeah. Normally fit and well, no meds or allergies, and he's up to date with all his jabs. Uh -huh. was on a bicycle BMX without a helmet on the top of a pipe. Uh -huh. The pipe was five foot, we reckon two and another, another three foot from him sitting on the bike. He fell off the side of the pipe, landed on his face, he lost three teeth, and we had an LOC of one minute. Thank so you very much. 100% Thank you. First name again. Pharrell. Pharrell. Yeah. Pharrell. 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 Pharrell, you're in the hospital. We're going to make you better. What's happened to you? Talk to me. 
talk to me. Get me two drips in, yeah, guys? Right, yeah. Pharrell. Get me the box of anesthetic Cap drugs. Crack on. I couldn't see any in the fridge. Oh, All right, darling. Oh, OK. Sorry, sorry. OK. Good well, lad. Just give me another. Just give me the line. Oh yeah. No. Sorry. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Well done. There you go. Another line here. Right. Sticky for this line, please. Sticky. Nothing. We're not doing anything. Okay. Right. I've got blood out of here as well. Two point five milligrams of morphine, please. I want to give you some painkillers. Stay still. I want to give you some painkillers. All right, Susie. All right, darling. All right, there you go. Good lad. You've had your morphine. It's going to help your pain. If your child's sick and you're, you, there is nothing that you personally can do about it, that loss of control over your child's destiny is very hard to deal with. Hello, I'm Emer, so I'm in charge tonight. Because he keeps going quiet and we're not sure, we think he might be going unconscious and then coming back up again, unconscious, coming back up again, we need to do a brain scan. And we'll put him into the brain scanner and see what's going on. They're not in charge of their child's destiny at that time. We are. And that's a horrible, must be a horrible, horrible feeling. How high was this thing that he came off? It was my neighbour. OK. I took them Do you know out. where it is? Uh, I know where it is. Apparently, what the ambulance crew was saying is about eight. OK. And was he on a bike, or...? I think so, he was on okay. a bike. OK. Did Max Facial come? Yes, yes, yes. Do you want some yeah. teeth? We've got some teeth still in place, but loose. We're going to proceed to intubation shortly, and those are some teeth. And there are more in, still in the mouth, but loose. We saw that actually his airway was really risky because it was full of loose teeth and blood. And if one of those teeth dislodged and he inhaled it, it could block off his airway completely and it could kill him. OK, he was snoring. To be honest, he's still snoring, but less so. But I'm, I've not got a happy feeling of you. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to switch lines because something's gone lumpy up his arm. Still breathing. About tailing off. I'll give another 20. OK. Socks good. OK. Stop breathing. Not breathing. Stop breathing. Come in, Reese, because you're in charge. That's your job. It's a bit like a swan, you know. You're calm on the outside because that's what everyone needs you to be. Your colleagues, the patient, and the relatives need you to be calm and confident and look as if it's all going to be fine, even if you're not sure if it is. So to his arm. So we have CO2. CO2 is 36, 39, 32. Let's have a quick listen on both sides and then we'll take... We knew that we needed to protect his airway with the tube, but then we knew when we put him on the ventilator, that'll sort the breathing out. And the other thing when children like that stop breathing is that makes us even more worried about their heads because an expanding blood clot on the brain will stop you breathing. And that makes us all the more conscious that we have to get them into the scanner and see what's going on. So we're going to do a CAT scan which looks inside the head and also inside his face because we know he's lost quite a few teeth and we think he's probably broken his upper jaw and we'll know when they see the pictures what's going on inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, let's get him round. Right, go. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Hang on a minute. Thank 
Okay. fine, doesn't it? That's reassuring from the point of view of needing to rush or not needing to rush to neuro theatres, which is good. Pelvis are fine, yes. Thank you. Great. Are you happy for us to come off? Yeah. Scans show Pharrell does not need immediate surgery. Instead, he'll be kept under observation in paediatric intensive care. Thank you. I stand in the playground surrounded by all the other mums and all I see is the things that they can injure themselves on. You know, you see all the sharp corners on things, you see the gates that aren't closed. You just live in a world where injury is a reality and an expectation as opposed to a surprise. And that's why we're not normal, because it's normal to us to have people, you know, stabbed, shot, falling off bikes, trying to die from pneumonia on a Saturday night. So, I'll, yeah, I've got to come home and get changed because I've got all fucking blood over my T-shirt and I've ripped me jeans. So I've got to come home and get changed, but then I'm going straight down the fucking pub. Sister Jen, one of the most senior nurses in the department, is starting her shift. She's on until 7 in the morning. I think I do give 150%. If I ever walked through the door and couldn't give that anymore, then I probably would stop. I have to be able to do a good job. I have to go in and give my all, because I think people deserve it. Doesn't matter if, you know, you've come off your bike through no fault of your own or you've gone and taken a load of drugs and it's completely your own fault that you've ended up in that situation. You can't, you can't make that judgement. You can't treat anybody any different or see them any different, no. They're patients. What happened? I got bitten. What? Yeah. By who? By, by my mate. And none of them are right, We was in the pub. We had a few beers and yeah. uh, we started arguing and it just went... <laughs> bit my nose. No need for it, you know what I mean? So you're going to see that the yeah. guy that, that bit your nose, you're going to see him again? Yeah, mate. I'll deal with it when I see him. No, let's forgive him, man. I'll forgive him, yeah? <laughs> Forgive him, seriously. Yeah, to be honest, if I was in your career... Oh. No, no, you shouldn't have done it. Of course you shouldn't have fucking done it. But forgive him, though. I don't know about that. Uh, what, forgive him and be his mate again, yeah? Go and have a drink with him. No, I'm not going to forgive him. No, no, I'm not... A I'm a Millwall fan. We don't forgive <laughs> people, brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'll deal, with, I'll deal with it my way when I'm ready to deal with it. Get out of him. Hello, that kid's teeth are here in recess. I'll leave them with the receptionist in recess. Um, I would like a bucket of warm water, please, or a sick bowl of warm water. Well done, matron. There we go. Jen's got you some warm water. Jen and I have known each other for more years than we would care to admit. These are my child's teeth, not my child's teeth, the child's teeth. There's a real sort of rite of passage of doing a set of nights with a group of other people. And if you survive your set of nights together, it's a bond that never leaves you. Hello, King Denny. Furniture. We are getting emergency.
French cyclist who's hit a street furniture, apparently, at 35 miles an hour. This next patient is an 18-year-old student. He's crashed his motorbike on his way to meet friends. Look, his bloods are ordered. And a CT. OK, this is Dalvin. He's 18 years old. He was a motorcyclist travelling approximately 35 miles an hour when he lost control, flipped a curb and went through a street um, bollard. Do you need to do one of these? Hey, guys, can we do a quick ABC? Yeah. Try and clear the seat line. Thank you. He's degloved his leg. I um, would not allow anyone that I love to ride a motorbike. Do you mind taking deep breathing now for me, please, sir? My lovely husband was about to get a motorbike when we met, and I told him that he could continue to get his motorbike, but I wouldn't be able to go out with him because I couldn't live with the terror every time he was late home that he was dead in a ditch. Airway is clear. Ready, steady, roll. Roll, roll, roll. And when I first had the kids, I had a motorbike, and I found that I didn't want to get on it just in case anything happened to me. And then I thought, oh, for God's sake, you know, get over it. You know, anything could happen to me at any point. Getting a small needle Alcohol. in your arm, OK? Don't jump. Dalvin's ripped off five inches of flesh above his left knee. The wound goes down to the bone. If it becomes infected, he could lose his leg. Hello. I'm, I've been down the other end. My name's Ema. I'm the consultant in charge. We need to get blood out of you in case you've lost any blood. We need to make sure that we've got some ready for you. Um, but that is going to need to be washed out in the operating theatre. I think your mum and dad are here. I'm going to go and speak to them. They can come in and sit with you while we're getting these x-rays sorted, OK? Let me speak to his parents. I'm Ema. I'm the consultant in charge tonight. So. He has got a very deep gash around his knee, and we're just getting x-rays now to see if he's actually broken a bone in his leg. I didn't know how hurt he was, and I know that he's riding the bike, and I was thinking to myself, for him to go to hospital, it must be something quite serious. Yeah, just... Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's the very first time that I've been in as an emergency very first time. Not a good experience, <laughs> no. First of many, I have no doubt. Between midnight and 5 a.m., over two-thirds of patients come to A&E because of drink or drugs. Okay. <laughs> right, let's get my boy sorted. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this. It comes in fits and starts, especially, as you know, at the weekend. Drunken head injuries, drunken vomiting, drunken, do you know? So that can be a little bit soul-destroying sometimes, cos you do think, oh, really, you know? I've, well, I've got myself in states. I've never needed A&E. And also... I've had any alcohol tonight. Yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah. And also... The thing Should you never mix it with alcohol. No, it's ridiculous. I know, and I'm the... I know, it sounds ridiculous, but... You get a lot of tears, a lot of drama, you know. I think sometimes in minors, I think the girls down there get it a little bit more because you do get the people that are a little bit drunk but aren't sick enough to be anywhere else, you know, and, and alcohol's never a, never good. Oh. Uh, if not, I'll be, yes, yeah. hello. Hello. 34-year-old Cloder has been brought to King's by her sister, Stephanie. Well, I basically fell down about six or seven concrete steps. Just, I was at to uh, look awake, but... And I basically landed on my face. And on my arm. Have you had anything to drink at Tootstar? Yes, unfortunately so. But uh, I'll be honest, do I have a bottle of vodka? A friend of ours has passed away. Um, and we were a family gathering. It was across, um... Work. About three hours. So I didn't just, you know, it was gradual life, that's the way. Cloder was at a wake, celebrating the life of Richard, an old family friend, when she oh, stepped God. back and tumbled down eight steps. My nose feels so. Does it? Uh, I broke, is it? Mm, it's a bit swollen here. Mm. And just, obviously, you're going to be swollen. 
You still look beautiful, darling. You just look up your beautiful big blue eyes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. What the fuck happened? It's okay, you just lost your foot. Mm. It's okay. Rich is up, up there looking upon us now. You're all right. You're gonna be all right. Think of poor Richard. It wasn't even a drunken fall, Claudia. No. You don't fall over. No. I I don't do it. You don't drink. <laughs> don't. Ray, um, okay, probably be about 15, 20 minutes, and we'll see you after. Yeah, 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 oh, definitely. Yeah, okay. um, do we need to take this to bed now, or orthopedic septic? All right, yeah. take it easy, um, yeah? And be strong. As a dad, um, sometimes you have to try and let go sometimes, because your children's going to think that you don't want them to do anything. You don't ever want them to do anything. You don't ever want them to grow up. But that's what he always wanted. You know, he saved his money to buy his bike. But even though I tried to support him, every time he moves off on that bike, like, my heart is, like, a bit scared. Four hours since her fall, Cloda still can't get through to her boyfriend Charlie. She's now trying their neighbour, Joe. Yes, I've fallen over and broken my arm. No, no I can't get in touch with Charlie. I can't, sorry, I can't talk to him, but I can't get in touch with Charlie. I've, sorry, she can't hear what I'm saying. Hi, Joe. Hello? I tried phoning him and I tried texting him, but he must have left the phone downstairs and probably gone to bed or something. OK, well, if you get any news, Joe, will you call us back? OK, thanks. OK, bye. Bye. She said to me, she went, Claire, you fall out of your head. You can't talk. We'll move back tomorrow. That's what she said. Oh, no, Joe. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's out to doing it. Kills a couple of minutes. Stand there. No, well, well, there's trouble here. Why don't you stay away? I'm not scared of trouble. It's all right. Don't yeah, worry about we, we don't want to cause any more trouble. He's gone there. He's gone there. Right, you better off sitting down there, OK? No, I'm going to sit you, here. You're injured enough as it is. No, don't, don't worry to... about that. I know, but we don't want to make him worse, and we don't want to let you guys get affected either, yeah? Well, get me seen to and send me home then, you know what I mean? Get me seen to and fucking send me home then, you know what I mean? On with the GCS of 10. Don't bring us any more. Right, hang on, we're swapping you for someone else. So far, several of tonight's patients in Resus have taken GBL, a liquid drug known as coma in a bottle. Oh, how to be young and have Saturday nights off work. <laughs> <laughs> how to be and young. be off your head on God knows what. Hey! Oh. 
We have a big party round the corner from King's. So you'll get three, four, five people in from the same party. In her 20s, Jen was a nurse in London's nightclubs, where she got the nickname, the dancing medic. You can take a sip and then half hour later take another sip. And then, but until the first one's out of your system, the second one doesn't hit, and that's why it's so nasty. I guess the drugs have changed. Years ago, you know, I used to work in the nightclubs. It would be pills, it would be coke. You'd probably get some ketamine as well. And then it all changed. We started to get GBL. One minute they're fine, next minute they're on the floor. Normally, if you take a couple of pills, after six hours, both those pills are out of your system. But where a GBL is a bit different, you take a couple of sips, and then you have this half hour, 45 minutes, hour, that you're really lucid, and then you bang, you go down again. Just give some morphine. Does he need an airway? Um, not at the minute, but he will do. Is it? They've all been taking GM. Yeah, GM, methadrone. Once they're unconscious, they have to be positioned on the bed and a bit of oxygen and monitored because unconsciousness can come before other things and you don't know whether they're the ones who are going to wake up and be fine or whether they're the ones who are going to slip into a deeper coma and have a heart attack, start fitting, stop breathing. Right, shall we get some IV diazomals ready? Yeah. yeah, it's all funny afterwards when they've woken up, but at the time it's quite serious. Right, what time is it? to be on the safe side, uh, but if it looks infected, it might just be that we need to, you know... Do I get to see infected? Does that mean my leg will come off? Well, we're giving him antibiotics. That's why I'm washing it out now, okay. is to try and minimise that risk, yeah? If Dalvin's wound gets infected, he may lose his leg. The hospital have decided the sooner it's cleaned, the better. Now, when I wash it out, your knee, are you wanting your dad to be here or not? What's easier for you, though? What would you prefer? You prefer Dad to be here or not? I don't know. I don't want to be bad, but it's... We're too many people. Can we get everyone to wait outside? Oh, yeah? Just, uh, because I think you're going to panic a bit. You Unless you think it will be comforting for you to have Dad, then that's fine. Firstly, I don't mind. I'd, I'd rather saw someone there uh, than they're not there, but... You, you would rather someone there? Yeah. That's fine. Then you speak to Dad. I'll get Mum from... The worst bit was when they was actually washing out his injury. That kind of touched me to my heart, really, where to see him so much agony and pain, I think that must have been the worst part of it for me. I'm super dreading this, man. Oh, no. Squeeze my hand if you want. Squeeze it. Squeeze it as hard as you want. Squeeze. We'll bring some Kentucky for you, man. I saw you squeezing my hand then. Oh, sorry. I was already squeezing your hand, thank you. I'm squeezing my hand, didn't it? I've got no energy. I'm squeezing your hand, it's the wrong way around. That'll probably end up in more Yeah, that's right, yeah. When I actually saw it, I was so scared. But I was scared in the way, I was more scared for him because I, I thought that he might actually lose his leg because it looked so deep to me. And I just don't know how he's going to live with that kind of injury. But I was scared for him, that what he's going to go through and what might happen to him, and, and it's going to have a big impact and effect on the whole family if he can't walk or he loses that leg. You're doing well, Donald. You're doing very well. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna change all our lives, not just his life. It's gonna change all of our lives. What? Another GBL? Yeah. Lovely. You're getting another one. Make a space. Oh, he's in the waiting room. We're all right. We're going. Lovely. Oh, We're going to be 
Joe, to stand up for me, mate. Yeah? yeah. Come on, up, fella. Up yeah. we go. Whoa. Sorry. On the bed. Ooh. I'll go and ask them what he's had. Ready? I've got lots of other people in who've had G and stuff like that. He's What's had he had? Here, mate. He's had MD and okay. I think he's had some speed as well. Yeah. OK. But also, he brought in with him a bottle of whiskey, which he was okay. downing. Which, Chapman. within 20 yeah. minutes, over half was gone. Okay. He literally face-planted the floor. So, yeah. as far as I was... OK, so he's felt yeah, him face planted the floor three times, so he's floor, not in a good so... way. All right, cheers. Uh, Have a seat, we'll be with you. OK, thank you. <laughs> OK. Wow. For a bit of novelty, this gentleman is old school. He's had alcohol, geez, wow. and speed. <laughs> and he's face planted from his own height yes, onto the floor time. three times. Three times. Three times. So we need to block him then. Shh. Okay. We need to block him. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. I'll get them to come round and do some exercise of his neck. In fact, don't block him, we'll just hold him because he's going to thrash if we yeah. block him. <laughs> Bear with me, bear with me, it just stinks. Worst bit coming now. <laughs> it's okay, it's the end of it. Squeeze it. Antiseptic fluid, remember when you were at school? And... Dalvin's raw wound must be completely disinfected. You had cuts. Oh, it's okay. You're really, well. You're really brave though. Oh, never mind, you're brave, never mind. You're very brave. But even a strong dose of painkillers won't brave. stop the severe burning. Brave, okay. it's done, it's done, it's done. <laughs> It's done. <laughs> it's done. It's strong, man. It's it's done. Done. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. You're fine. I'm going to take off your glasses a little bit. Enjoy your eyes. Right. You'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Uh oh. I, I, I always see Dalvin as my son, even though he thinks that he's a big man. But I always see him as, as my child. You know? Done the worst, yeah? That's so much, man. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But you're really strong, you've done really well. Okay. So. The way he was holding on to me, I knew that. It's fine. That was the part where it really touched me. I felt like, I don't know, I could do, if I could do more to help him, I would, but there wasn't, you know, I was doing as best as I could do, basically. The worst is over. I've got some more morphine for you because it's you. hurting you a lot, I can see. That kind of pain must have been, oh God, it's just unbearable pain. And the amount of morphine he was on and you're still in a lot of pain, so it's just a it's just a trauma experience is terrible. I wouldn't like any parents to really go through that or experience that, to be honest with you. Just get this nasty bit out of the way and it'll be getting better. <laughs> that, that's something that will always be with you forever, really. It become lighter in your memory because as he's healing and he's coming round, you feel a little bit more relieved, but you'll never really forget the experience. I will have to live with it, so will he, but... patient has been stabbed. The knife is still lodged in his lower back. Hey, you all right? No, there's no fight in the corridor. No, not yet. Give it time. The knife is still young. We've only got, like, three hours left. Anything can happen.
paramedics have brought in a young man with a large knife stuck in his lower back. Hello, I'm in charge. Hello, Emer. How are you? Good. Let's just get across. Let me get the old pat slide. Alleged assault having been stabbed twice. There's a three centimetre laceration in his right loin, just above his iliac crest. As you can see, the knife is still in situ. I haven't specifically seen his front because that's the position he was in when we've got him and we haven't rolled him, but he's, I'm sure there are no, no wounds on the front. No drugs, no volume issue. Thank you very much indeed. All right, you're in Kings. We're going to get you sorted, but we need to get you across onto the bed. If you stay still, we'll roll you. So it'll be as little movement as we can do, OK? Ready, ready, steady. Oh, yeah, it's moving. Just, it's moving. Just be careful. This is one of the real tragedies of so many young people, you know, feeling that they have to carry a knife for their own safety. Then when they get into a scrap, which might have been, you know, fist fighting, if they're all carrying a knife, it doesn't take long for someone to have six holes in them. Jen. Knife stuck in back. That's all we know at the moment. Someone who's been injured like that, in some ways, it's sort of a, an instant anatomy revision. The beauty of that case was that his knife was still in, so obviously not great for him, but it means that we can pick it up on X-ray and we can see where it is. OK. Quite a thin blade, isn't it? Well, we don't know because it's we're, we're looking on the edge of it. And as fast as negative. Fast as negative. It's gone slightly north, so we're going to reshoot it as an abdo. More X-rays are needed to show the exact position of the knife. Right, we're going, guys. We're going to X-ray to get another view. So we're going to take the team. She'll have rang him non stop. Yeah, she'll have rang him about 10, 20 times. Well, no, I'll ring. He's got no credits, this. Clodagh's got a message to call her boyfriend Charlie. Yeah, I'm just going to cry. You know I am. I'm going to cry before I speak to him. Hiya. Tell him I wasn't that drunk. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell him I wasn't that no, drunk. No, no. She had a drink like that, so wasn't it? She didn't focus with drunk. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, she's Doesn't worry. She wants to speak to you again now. Hold on a minute, Charlie. I, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't talk to you before I got really upset. Oh, babe. I swear to you, I wasn't, I wasn't drunk. I really wasn't. No, 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 we just, I was, I was just outside. I think Rosie's brother was there, just chatting. And you know when you put your foot back? and your foot goes over a step. Just one of those, completely one of those. I know that's what Joe thought, but I've had, like, lots of tablets. I've had, like, morphine and all sorts. So I'm some a little bit slower, you know? Don't you worry about me, Amber. Mm -hmm. 
I'll call you back after the bone doctor's been okay. I love you too. All right, darling. Bye, 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 bye. I feel much better now. The stab victim's been taken straight to theater to have the knife removed. Scans show that his wounds aren't life-threatening. Jen, do you want to see a scary picture? Yeah, I do. Scary picture time. You ready? That's a big knife. That's a really big knife. And he's sitting there on his blackberry. He's not anymore. I gave him the blackberry because I told him it'd get lost in theatre. Cool. It's okay. covered in claret soon. Mm -hmm. We're putting in a specimen bag, Nick, you've cleared his own About three, four in the morning. But if it is a bit quiet, we'll have a bit of a chin wag and have a bit of a laugh. I think we need it, you know? Sue? So, That's the knife that's still in his lower back. So how has that even got in there? Like, that's here. So oh, just there, just above his iliac crest. That log and it's just like yep. There we go. of the cubicles except cubicle two because there's someone in there. All the trolleys have been stripped and scrubbed. And I've cleaned all of these. The only thing is we need a couple of vomit bowls in. Is it eight? Laura's doing a tea round in the waiting room because apparently there's a couple of homeless people who have just sat in the waiting room. It's cold. <laughs> I'm going to back home next month anyway. I'll be back home to Scotland. I've had enough of years. London's fucked, it's finished now, mate. I've been here 26 years. You been asleep yet? The guard just woke me up. <laughs> the guard's the bastard. It's good. Aye. To be honest, I thought I was nearly going to have to put someone else in there because we've had three GBLs. You know, you've got to go home and you've got to go home to your own family and um, it gives you a very altered outlook on the world. You know, death's a real thing to us. I live in a world where a couple of times a week someone, you know, goes out to work and comes home dead. Uh, brought a check yesterday for real. <laughs> Eight-year-old boy fell off. <coughs> I don't know if you... Oh, yeah, did. Yeah. Bashed all his front teeth out. Yeah. Nothing else. Good boy, very and lucky boy. But also it just makes you have a different perspective on life. You know, don't stress the little things. You know, when the kids tip their food on the floor at home, you think, really, I can clean that up? You know, so it just gives you, hopefully, a bit more of a perspective and a sort of value of life. Worse. I think once I realised my face wasn't going to scar, I thought, right, well, that's fine, I can get over everything else. <laughs> Not being able to go on my motorbike now it means I have to catch the bus, which means that if I'm, I see a bus, I can't run for it, I just have to carry on walking and, yeah. I suppose like in the future, and if my dad said, um, I think you should do this or I think you should do that, then I think I'll take it like, a lot more seriously. I was 
frightened I wouldn't have any teeth. What do you think it would have been like if you'd have to go back to school with no teeth? It would be humil humiliating. I don't need a wheelchair, do I? I had tele stitches. Yep. Now over to the doctor. Everyone thinks it's about blood and guts and trauma and needles, but a and &E is so much more than that. Stay with me. Mum. When we brought her in, I thought that was it. Totally, I thought, Christ, not now. Thank you.